Spurs against Stevenson as well. Oh, there is the power! Left hand has worked Dawson out! Danger. Unforgettable knockouts caught on tape. Though getting knocked out will mess with the recipient's memory, the rest of us will remember these exchanges for a very long time. And in case we ever forget, the internet has our backs. In this video, we'll take a look at some older, perhaps more obscure knockouts, but ones that once you see them, you won't forget them. Here are unforgettable knockouts caught on tape. The camera quality may be low, but the quality of the technique is high. A 2-3-2 punch combination was gnarly. The second hook landed flush and shut the lights out. And that does it for our video. Kidding. There are so many more where that came from. Adonis Stevenson has some serious power. When he locked horns with Chad Dawson, he was able to get the upper hand by throwing a bit of an overhand. This cross went over the defense of Dawson and dropped him. Though Dawson did try to return to his feet, his legs just weren't there to support him. It only took one shot from Adonis to get the job done. That is a scary man right there. On to some more boxing. There are certain fighters that once they smell blood in the water, the fight is essentially over. When the boxer in black shorts senses that his opponent is dazed, he unleashes a flurry of punches that has me winded just watching. His opponent's shell held up okay, but a few shots slipped through the cracks and then he was sent slipping through the ropes. That always makes a knockout look that much more brutal. Want to see some one and done action? A perfectly timed and beautiful placed cross will almost always put someone to sleep. This is a powerful shot and I'd love to show you some proof. Seen here is a right hand landing right on the button. Not only did he land this punch and knock his opponent out, but he also walked away before the referee stepped in, which obviously adds about 10 style points. Say what you want about Deontay Wilder's technique, or his choice of entrance attire, but this man hits so incredibly hard. In this clip, we see Wilder about to slip a shot in between the gloves of his opponent. When Wilder lands, people often drop, and that was the case here. However, against his better judgment, he returned to his feet only to eat more glove thrown by Wilder. Down again, then up again, but then back down again as Wilder once more throws some bombs that he calls hands. Ready for a hard to watch finish? One of the hardest real life glitches to watch is when someone gets knocked out, but they still stay standing for a bit. In this clip, a straight right sends this guy right into REM sleep, but his body is still up. Another one-two combination is enough to send the mannequin crashing down. Okay, let's look at some kicks now. This guy just looks like he's a bad man, but like in the cool way. The dude on the left lands a thudding leg kick and sends his opponent spinning. Then he goes upstairs with the kick and that's all it took. This kick landed on the back of the head it seems, which is not the ideal spot to be getting kicked if there was one, the recipient stiffened up immediately, and it's safe to say that the action was stopped. You ever watch Beyblades? These two met in the center and collided. This looked like how I'd imagine splitting an atom goes. But we aren't here to talk about nuclear fission. Let's watch boxing. It seemed like it was a double knockdown, but apparently it was a knockdown and a slip. Either way, both got up and Powell drilled his glove into the face of Bundridge, putting him down yet again. Speaking of drilling punches, this is about as perfect as a punch can land, in my opinion. An overhand strike landing on a taller fighter is almost always brutal, but this one especially. This knockout has nothing on the next one though. Mike Tyson knocking someone out? No way. That's sarcasm to the highest degree. Mike Tyson could knock out my mom's minivan. Tyson is able to circle with ATN here and clip him with a right hand. This shot shook Etienne's head and absolutely rattled his brain. Despite Tyson being looked at as a monster back then, he really wasn't. Terrifying? Yes. Human? Incredibly. He helped Etienne back up to his feet in a showing of heartwarming sportsmanship. Speaking of being nice, have you hit the button yet? I'd really appreciate it. If you're liking the content, hit the subscribe button too. Drop a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. Hey, this guy looks familiar. That's former UFC middleweight champion Israel Adesanya. If you didn't know, that guy came up in the kickboxing world. It's really not that hard to guess. Seen here 
is Izzy showing off his skill and personality way before he had even half the fame he does now. He's hitting the shuffle, dropping his hands, but most importantly, landing. Perhaps a bit overwhelmed, his opponent wasn't able to stop this head kick, resulting in Adesanya's victory. Oh, and also one of the coolest taunting moments in history when he's laying on the ropes. That was really rad. What's your favorite Adesanya knockout? Drop a comment and let us know. A real slobber knocker we've got here. Now it's mostly sweat, but I'm sure there's some slobber in the ratio of particles sent flying off this poor guy's head when he eats this tornado kick. Seriously though, this is the stuff of movies. The angle, the lighting, the technique. If someone told me this was fake, I'd believe it. But I think I know my stuff, and this looks real to me. So it made the cut. Rate this knockout on a scale of real Hollywood for us. I love a great lead hook. Seriously, it's probably my favorite punch to throw and my least favorite to be hit by. What a dichotomy that is. Thankfully, Johnny Gonzalez has never thrown this strike at me because, wow, he can make it look real painful. If you watch the slow motion replay, you see the genius here. He slightly dips down and looks low, making his opponent think the shot isn't coming upstairs. Well, guess where it went? You got it, upstairs. More Mike Tyson, more brutal stoppages. I'm not sure how anyone has ever survived a Mike Tyson flurry. The punches come from all angles and look like they're hard enough to move a continent. The shots he lands here are just as powerful as he's ever thrown. And unfortunately for his opponent, the defense just wasn't up to par. Do you want to see a reason why you should keep your hands up? Well, here you are. This is a pretty brutal knockout. Safe to say a lesson was learned. This has got to be one of the best knockouts ever. A bit sloppy? Sure. Am I complaining? Absolutely not. This dude came in like a freight train with his hands, and just when his opponent thought he was safe, boom, a jumping switch kick. This is one of my all-time favorite finishes, and it gets me so hyped up every time. I can't watch this without getting up to shadow my cat. My cat has claws though, so he usually wins. Here's why we try not to circle into the opponent's power hand. Much like when Michael Bisping ran into Dan Henderson's right hand, the man in green made a slight step towards his opponent's power hand and paid for it with his life. Well, joking. That's a bit extreme, but he did get a headache for it. This is what I call some sharp hands. A right hand down the pipe with a lot of steam on it, but just enough. This is why an elite level boxer is such a dangerous person. Want to see more elite level boxing? We got ya. In case you didn't know, Lennox Lewis is that guy. And by that guy, I mean the guy that can turn the lights out with one short move of the arm. He gets his opponent backed into a corner, paws away at him and make him second guess throwing anything, and then unloads with a series of right hands that put him down and really makes him look shocked. Hey, look, it's the dude from earlier. Israel Adesanya enters the video once again to give us another scintillating stoppage. This technique is called question mark kick. It looks like it's gonna go low and then it doesn't. The shape of the kick looks like a question mark. And in this case, it had Izzy's opponent asking, what the hell happened? So yeah, question mark kick is a rather fitting name. Have you liked the video yet? Dare you to do it now if you haven't. Also, drop a comment. Let us know what knockouts from this list you're liking and which ones you think might fit in this video. Here's another great kicker. Raymond Daniels is amongst the who's who of karate. In this Bellator fight, he overwhelmed his opponent by paying tribute to Tony Hawk's 900. He spun and spun and spun. Just when his opponent was overwhelmed and had no idea what was coming, Daniels threw a punch that put him to sleep. Anderson Silva may be one of the most dynamic strikers to grace MMA. The spider mixed in knees and elbows out of the blue and kept people guessing with his kickboxing fundamentals. This is one of his most creative knockouts. He throws an upward reverse elbow and slices through his opponent's defense perfectly. Silva then walks away because walk-off knockouts are the MMA version of walking away from explosions, maybe even cooler. What's your favorite Anderson Silva finish? What's more legitimate than a boxing ring with questionable stains and a referee dressed like Fred Durst? Whatever, we're here to talk about the fight. The guy on the bottom throws a triangle choke that looked promising for a second, but he didn't control his opponent's posture, so he escaped. That triangle attempt was his sword of Damocles. After this failed attempt, his opponent got a better position and started beating his face like he was the drummer of Limp Biscuit. That's a callback to when I said the referee looked like Fred Durst.
Get it? Fighting is beautiful, but my inner empath feels bad when I see someone get completely outclassed and almost have no way out rather than to, you know, go out. The man in red gloves is picking his opponent apart, and it's only a matter of time before something stops this fight. A head kick and a barrage of punches sends yellow shorts tumbling to the mat, and that's it. This cage triggers my claustrophobia. The action starts, and it's pretty easy to see who the better fighter is right off the bat. The taller guy, slow, stiff, and doesn't seem to be too prepared. The shorter guy stuffs a takedown, gets knee on belly, and rains down leather. Really, this could have been stopped sooner, but I'm glad nobody was seriously hurt. How about a quick detour to the freak show? I'll never understand the desire for these freak show matches. Crossover fights? Great. Super fights? Yes, please. Freak show fights? Go away. In this modern day David vs. Goliath match, we see a very, very small man with his legs stuck under a much larger man. Though Gravity and his opponent's weight are tag teaming this little guy, he's able to get enough space to smack this big guy up a bit. Subsequently, he taps due to strikes, and I just feel bad watching this happen. Who doesn't love a good check hook? This is one of those shots that plays offense and defense at the same time, and it's a very important one to know when getting into striking, let alone fighting. Here's a great example of it and its effectiveness. There have been a lot of instances of shorter fighters beating taller ones in this video, and it has me hesitant to talk back to anyone, seeing as how I'm tall and skinny. This fight shows not only short versus tall, but relaxed versus tense. The shorter fighter's coach is telling him to have fun, and he listens well. He has a lot more fun than his opponent, who's getting blasted in the face with multiple punches. We've seen enough punches. How about a kick up next? This clip starts with a bit of a stalemate on the ground, so the referee stands the two up to restart in a striking position. Well, that's bad news for the guy who was on top. As soon as the referee says go, a kick is launched, and the fighter that was formerly in a winning position is sent to the mat face first. MMA at any level is the most volatile sport in the world and I absolutely love that about it. To cap off the amateur MMA clips, here's a Superman punch. I'm not super fond of this technique because I've played the UFC video games online, but hey, if someone can make it work in person, then that's definitely getting added to the highlight reel. The guy with the buzz head here looks like a Kroger brand Alex Pereira. Saying that he fights like that would be, no offense, an overstatement, but he does well at his competition level. Both fighters look tired so it was a matter of who could dig deeper. In this case, it's knockoff Pereira. And now, for one of my favorite stoppages of all time. Emil Meek versus Husamar Palharas. For those of you who don't know, Palharas was released from multiple organizations, including the UFC, for holding on to submission for too long. Not just any submission, but leg lock submissions. It's not like squeezing the neck a little longer, but he's tearing ligaments clearly after people tap. So Emil Meek decided to do what many of us fans can't do. He gave this guy a bit of his well-deserved punishment. When Paul Harris presses Meek onto the fence, Emil immediately drives elbows into his opponent's head. This dazes him, and the follow-up shots put him out. Thank you, Emil. Well, that does it for the video. Again, make sure you leave a like. We do appreciate it. Subscribe and hit that bell icon to make sure you never miss out on any future videos. Anything you want to see next, drop a comment and let us know. Thanks again for watching the video. Until next time.